Hello everyone, this is Auntie Katie, and we just passed Valentine's Day, didn't we? And I hope that some of you were able to have a, a Valentine's party with your class, maybe even an online Valentine's party. And it's a good way to celebrate Valentine's. Valentine's celebrates love, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's open with a word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you that you love us and help us to really understand about your love and friendship with us. I pray that you open our hearts, our ears, and our minds to know and love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now we've been studying what? The biblical worldview of marriage. Now when people think of marriage, they think about love. Of course, you want to marry somebody that you love. And, you know, like marry your best friend. And what does that mean? What does that mean to love someone? Well, we all want to be loved, don't we? We're not, I know you're not ready to get married yet, but, you know, um, the kind of love that a husband and wife has for each other is kind of the love that we all want to be loved. We want to be included uh, with your friends. You, nobody wants to be left out. You know, maybe some of us don't need a lot of friends to, and, and we don't want to be really popular and need all the friends, but I know that we all want someone who loves us and be our friend forever, don't we? We don't want someone, we, we want a friend that we can count on. Someone that won't suddenly unfriend you or, uh, or they lie to you or hurt you. We want a very good friend who will always be with us. So some people think, oh, I wish I had a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend and he or she will be my perfect friend and I'll be really happy. Now, some people might think, oh, if I find the perfect person to marry, then my husband or my wife will always love me and be my perfect friend and I'll be happy. And, and a lot of people, you hear people talk about love and movies to show that when you find that perfect person, your soulmate, a best friend who loves you, then you'll be happy and you'll be fully satisfied. But you know, the Bible tell, talks a lot about love, but the Bible does not teach us that love or marriage with a perfect friend is going to make us perfectly happy. You might have a very good friend. You might have a brother or a sister who you're very close to, and that's a wonderful gift to have a good friend like that. But even that person cannot make you completely happy either. You know, that person uh, will, will probably do things that you don't like, and they might even leave you one day. The Bible tells us that there's one friend, one friend who can completely make you happy, that can totally satisfy you and will never leave you. Well, let's turn to John chapter 15, verse 15. And I think you know the friend that I'm talking about, but let's hear from Jesus. John 15, 15. This is Jesus talking. And turn your Bible, chapter 15, 15. Turn there and let me read it. Let's read it together. Put your finger on the small number 15. This is Jesus talking. He says, No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you, what? Friends. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. Jesus is saying that, ah, I want you to be my friend. Now, can you imagine that? That's, that's a really, actually, mind-blowing because you remember Jesus' disciples has been following Jesus. Jesus is their teacher, greater than them. You know, he, Jesus is their authority. Now, it's like your teacher. And then they saw Jesus doing miracles. So they know Jesus is more powerful, much more powerful than they are. And they saw that Jesus, how Jesus lived his life. And they saw that Jesus lived a perfect and holy life. So they look up to Jesus as, the, uh, the, as their master. And then they would think of themselves as the servant. And it would be natural for these disciples to look up to him, somebody that they're really, you know, a little bit uh, scared of maybe, somebody that they really admire. But here Jesus says, I call you my friends. Wow, Jesus wants to be friends with them. And even, especially these disciples are ordinary people. They, the Bible tells us that they're not very educated either. They, they're not really smart type of people. And here Jesus says, I want to be your friend. That is fantastic. Now, what kind of friend is Jesus? Is Jesus a good friend? Well, let's turn to Luke chapter 15, okay? 
uh, flip back a little bit to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 15. And I'm going to read from verse 1 and 2. Luke 15. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear him, to hear Jesus. All the tax collectors and sinners. Now tax collectors and sinners are the ones that every, nobody likes. They lie and cheat and, and they're not good people and people generally reject them, don't want to be their friend. But here we see that the tax collectors and sinners who are all drawing near to hear Jesus. They wanted to come hear Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumble saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. Now the Pharisees and the scribes are the ones who, you know, are the good people, you know. And uh, they think themselves as very good. They think well, we're not like those bad people. And why does Jesus eat with the sinners? Because they were coming to him and Jesus actually received them and ate with them. Now, when you eat with someone, that means you are their friend. You're inviting them to your house or they invite you to your house. And that means Jesus was friends with them. Now, that's the kind of friend Jesus is, you see. The kind of friend Jesus is that he was even friends to people that nobody liked the people who other people rejected. You know, you might do things that other people don't like, but you will never annoy Jesus. You may have done bad things and you're afraid to tell people because if they know something about you, they would reject you. But you know, Jesus will never reject you, no matter what you've done. Friends may not treat you nice, but Jesus will always do what is best for you. And there's no one on earth that is a friend like Jesus. Isn't Jesus the kind of friend you want? Yeah, a friend like this is the one that would really be the one who satisfies us, who really make us happy. Um, you know, it's good to have other friends. It's great. It's good to be married, to have a husband or a, or a wife. But you know, the Bible tells us the biblical worldview of marriage is that no matter how good a friend somebody is here on earth, they cannot be that perfect friend that will truly satisfy your heart. Only Jesus can truly make us happy on the inside all the time because he is that perfect friend for us. And he wants to be our friend. I mean, here we see in the Bible that Jesus calls us our friends. Jesus is pursuing us, so he's coming after us to be our friend first. You see, we are sinners. We disobey God, right? We disobey God every day. And when we do something wrong, that is like saying, God, I don't want to do what you want me to do. That's our way of rejecting God. We have rejected God. We reject God every time we do something wrong. And in fact, the Bible tells us when we do that, we're not God's friends. We are God's enemies. So how can we be God's friends if we reject God and we are actually his enemies by saying, no, I don't want to do what God tells me to do. Well, you know, God could have said, fine, you go and do whatever you want to do and you'll be punished for all the things you've done wrong. But God didn't say that, did he? What did God do? He came to rescue us. He came to rescue us from the punishment that we, would, we deserve by rejecting God. So he came from heaven to earth. Jesus came from heaven to earth to take the punishment on the cross so that we can be reconciled, so that we can be made right with God and be his friend. So Jesus actually pursued us first. He came to us first. He says, I want to be your friend. I want to have that relationship with you. Now, would you respond? Would you say yes? Would you say yes, Jesus? I want you to be my perfect friend because you are the perfect friend. And so I want you to be, to respond to Jesus' call to be uh, his friend. So here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to do about love. When we talk about love, this is, this is, I, I want you to pursue or go after Jesus' love because he already came after us. He already said, I want to be your friend now. Now, there are three things that we do to pursue God, to go after Jesus and be his friend. First thing you have to do is you must believe in Jesus, that he saved you, he, that he to, to save you from your sins. Believe in Jesus to save you from your sins. You say, Jesus, I believe you died for me so that I can be forgiven of my sins. That's the first thing you have to do so that you can have a relationship with God. 
Second thing is, get to know Jesus as your friend. Now, it takes time to get to know a friend, right? I don't just meet you one day and then, okay, we're best friends. No, you want to know your friend. And you want to know Jesus. And that would be to read the Bible. The Bible tells us all about Jesus. And um, go to Sunday school, learn about Jesus. And go to Awana to memorize verses. And that helps you know Jesus. Read the Bible on your own at home. That helps you get to know Jesus, your best friend, the perfect friend. So read the Bible. And then thirdly, when you have a friend, what do you do? You talk to each other, right? So I want you to make time to talk to Jesus. That is to pray. We talk about prayer and it's actually talking to Jesus. And you can talk to him as a friend. You know, Jesus, someone at school said something really mean to me and I feel bad. Would you please help me, Jesus? You are my perfect friend. And some of my friends are not treating me well, but thank you that you are my perfect friend. I can come to you with my problems. So you can talk to Jesus and let him know he is the perfect friend who will not, who will not uh, reject you. And um, no matter what you've done, no matter what things you continue, we can continue to sin. Jesus is our perfect friend who will always be with us. So, um, you know, I want to let you know that I asked Jesus to be my savior and friend when I was about 17 years old. And now you're a lot younger than 17. And so you get a head start. You get to know Jesus today. So if you don't know Jesus already, I want you to know Jesus today and that he can be your lifetime friend and now and even into eternity forever. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for being sending Jesus to die for us. Thank you that he has taken away our sins so that we can have friendship with you. Lord, I pray for those who are listening today who do not yet know you. I pray that you open their hearts, that they would receive you as their Lord and Savior, and that they can experience the joy of a, of a friend with Jesus. And help us too today, Lord, that we learn to know you and love you, to pray, and to read your word so that we um, know you and to be your friend every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.